generated when you allow your unrenewed carnal mind to fluctuate and seize opportunity over you, but then we find ourselves looking for a church home and we get out and we get out in those streets. I mean, those streets are just as, <laughs> the church streets are just as bad as the, the streets we came from. Amen. You know, and it has its own history and background, and then you come to a church where we're talking about kingdom, we're talking about crystal century, a message which is a Christ-centered message, and it's not necessarily a message about you; it's about Him. Then you got to somehow pull the plug on you and plug in Him, and a whole bunch of stuff that goes on. And you're trying to figure out how can I just, you know, get on the same page? How can I just let God do what He needs to do in my life? You just can't see it and say. You know, you know, who was that? Malcolm McDowell or somebody? Or William McDowell? Not Malcolm, that's, a, that's another guy. William McDowell. You remember he said he had a song a couple years ago we, we was teary-eyed about and mystified. <laughs> I give myself away. You remember that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we, we, we plugged in with it, you know. It made you feel good to go down in the core of your being, got you excited. But did it cause you to get engaged with the Father? Did it? Change the tradition. No, I know it. That's what it does. It kind of sedates you. With a, you know, suit is a form of a. It, it soothes your 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 soul, your emotional makeup. You know, and and, and but it doesn't does do enough work on the inside of us. Mm -hmm. And that's why we got to go to the point of reference, which is the scriptures, and allow the Holy Spirit to take what we know or what we've known and bring some clarity on it. Especially if we're going to be a fitly framed together people, you know, coming under this, this umbrella, you know, part of Rehoboth and International Ministries, uh, where our destiny is Lord. and our future is. Okay. That's a, I mean, I believe in all that right there, where Christ is preached and what happens? Life. Yeah, yeah, that's the whole goal. I believe that. Amen. I don't believe God just gave me that just for me to try to have something on the, on the wall or for me to just try to, you know, to be kind of deep and complex, but I believe that what Christ has preached, lives are supposed to change. I believe when we get on the page with what God has and we, you know, begin to understand certain things, then things happen. Those are movements and, and those are things of elements of hope. And there's a things that the Father has for us, right? We're not supposed to be disgusted and, you know, and depressed and, and dissed at all. We're supposed to be, you get what I'm saying? None of that should be a part of who we are. In spite of everything where we've been. So we talked about it's imperative for us to grow. It's imperative for us to be able to enter into what the Father has for us. And so when I thought about where we've been so far, and I'm a, I'm a teacher by nature, and I like to make sure we get the point. And I, I, sometimes I reiterate like this. why well, I took time out last week to try to kind of reiterate. Uh, if you guys weren't here, you probably should have went over it. You know, we on YouTube, and we got, we got our own group. So you can always go back to the group if you're not here, or go to YouTube. We got a whole bunch of uh, videos over there for your own listening pleasure. So I'm just saying, but if I don't have a YouTube. Okay, well you need one. You need one. If you don't have one, you need one. I've been saying that for a long time. People say I don't have a YouTube. Well, you behind, Mr. Right. Mr. and Mrs. Dinosaur. But uh, I'm just saying. How long YouTube been around? A long time. We have a lot of tools at our disposal. I know it's uncomfortable for some of us, but some boxes got is made to be broken. I'm just gonna tell you that. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, sometimes you have to do something different to get That's what right. you want. I'm That's just saying. Right. That's right. Mm -hmm. And where God is calling me to is more important than where I am at this point. Amen. I'm just saying. Amen. I don't know who that's for. That's good. That's good. But God wants to bring these parts together. That's why we went over 1 Corinthians 12, because all of us are comprised and composed of a part. We, we are a collective body. We're not disheveled. We shouldn't be disinterested in the things of God. And God forbid if we live disembodied from what he wants to do as a collective body. Because there's a synergy happening in the spirit that he's summoning everything back to the Father. I don't know if you know that. There's a critical mass in the earth. And in spite of the forecasting that's coming on about this, you know, the eschatological quagmire that's in the earth, you know, everybody keeping their eye on Israel. But I'm here to tell you, we need to keep our eye on Jesus. There you go. Yeah, yeah. We need to look to the hills to come our help. Our help comes from the Lord. Amen. He is the barometer. Amen. 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 That's why he said, all power is given to me in heaven and earth, but let you know where the power lies. So it's not in a plot of land. 
is in the promised man. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Thank you, God. We were looking at the land, but there's a man that has a promise. Mm -hmm. And his name is Jesus. Tell your, tell, tell your neighbor that's Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, and then we need to get there. So we, we've been talking about, we went through a few scriptures. There's a certain aspect uh, what Jesus had divested or what the Father had originated on the inside of himself. He had something that was here called a wisdom, eternal purpose that was within God as it relates to what he wants to do with humanity. And the salvation is a gateway to what he wants to do. And he, you know, he brought us in to his, you know, into the church, into the kingdom. And he has, he's working some things out in us. I tell you that he's working some things out. Yeah, he's supposed to be at work in you. I'm just saying, he said, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. So he, he's supposed to be at work in you. So he's working the things. And you, I know we, it, it's a lot of work going on. It's pretty loud. But I'm telling you, he has a goal. So he ain't randomly just putting you through the process. He wants to perfect some things that's in you. Amen. There is an expected end that the Father has. Yes, but in the meantime, we're in the midst of the process. Yes. So we're not yet finished. Amen. The verdict is not out. So it get a little intense sometimes. Yeah. You know, and some things you can't figure out. Yeah. Right. Am I right? Yeah. You don't know where we're headed. But I'm here to tell you, he's, <laughs> he has a goal. Yeah. And he's yeah. gathering everything that's in heaven and on the earth in him. Yeah. And so eventually, I don't care what your church background is, there's only going to be one solution. Yeah. And that's Christ. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And I'm adamant about that portion because that's the only thing that won't be taken from us. Everything else is going to be taken. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Apostolic, prophetic, deliverance, healing, all the other things that we use to hide behind, that's going to be removed. Yes, Lord. Only one man is going to stand. Yes. And his name is Jesus. Jesus! So he's summoning individuals, members, parts. Remember we talked about that? Mm -hmm. He set those members and parts in the body. And when he set those members and parts in the bodies, guess what? You belong to the body. There's a there's a expectation from the parts that he's bringing together, and his expectation is to have that body know that we are to have some things in common. Oh, oh. 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 boy, y'all y'all sharp. A couple weeks ago, I was like, okay, well, y'all y'all been practicing all things in common. That's right, all things in common. That is where he wants to get his body, his church. That the body that's in the valley of decision, that body that was disassembled over like in Ezekiel, remember, 37. You know, y'all know that it was dry bones over there? And the goal was to have that those bones and the sinew and the skin that come upon that disenfranchised body that began to be, it stood and said, I think it's in the 10th verse that it stood up as a exceeding great army. Yes, sir. And I believe God's going to have something in the earth. It's going to look a bit foolish to the natural eye. But if you can see through the eyes of the Spirit, you're going to be able to notice His hand is on something. Yeah. And He's stirring some things up. And He's initiated a course and a path for all of us that we have an opportunity to experience. But we have to discover how can we engage God how can we get on his page? Because, I mean, how much closer, or how closer can we be? We, we under the same blood. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. right? Ain't no Baptist blood. Mm -hmm. Ain't no Pentecostal blood. Mm -hmm. It's one blood. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, am I right? Mm -hmm. Paul, I think Paul knew what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. I don't care what preachers get up and say, well, you know, we got it. Ain't nobody else like us. Mm -hmm. No, it's one blood. Mm -hmm. yes, one. Nobody else is going to atone for mankind Amen. or the church. So there is one blood. And that's why. That's the reason why we got to have all things in common because there's only one point of reference. There's only one access that we have. And that blood was shed on the cross. Everybody has to go to that one cross. Amen. Amen. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So we, are, we have more things than familiar. We have more in common. Right. There you go. We have more things in common than we know. And it's only when we decide to get ensnared or when we refuse to hold ourselves accountable 
to certain aspects of who we were when God is trying to infringe upon us certain aspects of who he is yeah. and then all of a sudden we have what we call a conflict of interest in us because that's where the disturbance comes when it becomes the fork in the middle of the road and all of a sudden you say wow I've been going left all my life and God says now, now it's time to change the speed and the direction of your life and go right amen, amen. 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 and, and that's, that's what it's all about being fitly framed understanding that God wants to redirect us tell you that God wants to redirect you yeah, he, do. he wants to redirect the church he wants to bring the church to a an expected end he has a course that has already been set and <clears throat> he's bringing us to a level of holistic uh, uh, engagement so we can have uh, the same mind we can't just sit up here and quote stuff like mind of Christ, I got the mind of Christ remember that, y'all was quoting that for about a few but, right, I listen to everything yeah. Yeah. mind of Christ, mind of Christ because most of our faith is th this songbook you know, and we, and we say things in church. We just say it because we, well, we're puppets sometimes, or canaries, or parrots. But <clears throat> I, I believe things are being said with an attitude of building something. Because worship should yeah. gather us. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so we got to get in our spirit. How do we get to the point where we have all things in common? Yeah. I mean, we already heard that we don't need to break rain. I spent some time a couple of teachers ago that we can actually complement one another, that we can actually have different parts and be unique and different and celebrate one another. We, yeah. Even though we're not equal, we can, you know, we don't have to tolerate each other. We can celebrate each other. But how, how do we get to the point? But there's some words in scriptures that are necessary. We just can't like just hang out and say church, 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 because even the word church is, is misconstrued. It's kind of, you know what I mean? Some, you know, people ask, what church you go to? Anybody heard yeah, yeah. yeah. They say, what church you got to tell? <laughs> Even that word has been brought, <laughs> slandered. And it's really been slandered because of uh, different ideologies and interpretations on what church looks like. You know, and so God wants to bring us to the point where we become, if we need to learn what church is, in scriptures, it's not my teaching, but the word ecclesia is an important part, so... We, we're not necessarily, I don't care what church you are, we haven't yet seen the ecclesia yet. Yeah. That governmental part. The one that, that legislates and, you know, things in the earth. So we ain't seen that yet, so we have to settle for the knockoff, the institution. So we, what we saw, what we continue to see is the institution called church. We haven't seen the organism called church because we haven't done anything internally within the church to redefine it. We haven't gone to the core of the church. We haven't gotten down in the deep recesses of our hearts and allowed the word to kind of reconfigure us and so that our mind can be changed so we can accommodate what the Father wants to bring us on a collective level. Y'all awake? Yes. And so we got to, and the only way you can get there, the only way we can be awakened to that reality there's some things we have to go through scriptures and allow God himself to interject it to us.